everyone, Roman Jenkins here. Welcome back to the Let's Learn series. I kind of let this series fall by the wayside for a bit. I uh, did my Black Ops 1 LP, did a Ghost Recon LP. Uh, those were a lot of fun to do. I never really got back into the series. It was really complicated by the time I left it. And I didn't feel like I had the kind of time to uh, devote to it to make it what it should be. But I'm back now. We'll see how far this goes. If people are interested, if this all seems very interesting, we'll keep going with it. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that's really interested me over the last few months because I switched jobs, no longer in aerospace, I'm actually in energy generation now. And more specifically, I work in coal power. I didn't really understand how a coal power plant worked. I had a vague idea, um, and I, you know, I, I have to be in full disclosure, while I work for a coal company, I am not a big fan of coal as an energy generation source. It's not super efficient, it's not super effective, it's kind of dirty. But I'm not going to let that color anything beyond that statement right there. just want to have full disclosure out there. I'm not endorsing it in any way. I'm simply stating a fact I do work for a coal company. Now, if we want to understand how coal power works, we have to kind of follow a piece of coal from cradle to grave. And the cradle in this case is, of course, the ground. And you can get the coal out of the ground in two different ways. The, the normal mining method, you know, the one we th all think of, you put up mine shafts, you bring machines and people down, and you pull the coal right out of the rock. Or you can do what's called mountaintop removal, uh, where you bulldoze an area and kind of just start pit mining and strip mining uh, to get towards the coal. Uh, that's becoming increasingly popular in states like Kentucky as they uh, loosen their environmental laws. Anyways, once you have the coal out of the ground, you have two options. If you're shipping it whole, as in like big chunks of coal, you put it on a barge or you put it on some train tracks and you send it to its final destination. If you're, if you have access to a pipeline, uh, which many places do now, you have a couple options on that as well. You can grind the coal up into powder and mix it with water in two ways. You can do a one-to-one -one mix of water and coal which uh, creates a substance called slurry that looks a lot like oil and uh, put it in the pipeline and pipe it off to uh, wherever it needs to go to uh, at which point they, uh, the final generation company will put it in a centrifuge and get all the water out that way or they'll let the water dry out uh, evaporate in uh, what are called these coal ponds uh, they're really amazing to look upon it's just this big black pond um, the other method is called the log method where instead of a one-to-one -one mixture they actually do a four parts coal to one part water or thereabouts mixture and it looks a lot like a log it's more compact it's much more dense uh, it's a little drier and you can get that in a pipeline as well uh, it dries out a little quickly a little more quickly uh, it's easier to break down all that stuff so there's it takes a little bit more to get that to its destination of course so once the coal is on site, there's if it's already been powderized, it gets ready, it goes right in the queue to go into the furnace. If it's not been powderized, uh, it, it then is pulverized down to two inch chunks and then smaller into uh, dust. So once we've got a piece of coal at dust level, you know, it, it looks, uh, people say it looks like talcum powder. And uh, that's actually a pretty good uh, descriptor. It, it, it's about the consistency of. Uh, you put it into suspension in a boiler. And uh, a boiler, you ever see uh, like a Victorian era steam train or something like that, or a steamboat, where they just start shoveling coal into a, a furnace? A boiler is a lot like a furnace. But the way they actually burn the coal in there is more like a grain silo, where if you ever see a grain silo, uh, after you dump some grain in there, there's all this dust coming up out of the ground. And if you light a match in a grain silo, there's a really good chance one particle is going to catch fire, and that spreads the fire to other particles until it creates a chain reaction and an explosion. Um, that's sort of what happens in a furnace in a coal plant. It creates a long, sustained explosion from the dust that's being burned in suspension, which is to say in the air. It's not on the bottom of the thing. And as this dust burns, there are a series of pipes that are coming into the furnace uh, from the unit. This is all called the boiler. Uh, these pipes come in. They have water in them. And the water is heated up, very, very hot, and creates a 
because of the shape of the boiler system and everything like that, it creates a jet of steam that powers a turbine. This turbine turns very, very quickly. Uh, the steam goes through it very quickly, uh, condenses down at the end. It's resupplied by fresh water. A lot of places use uh, nearby lakes, usually man-made, as sort of heat exchangers on this to condense the water quickly. And then the, uh, the turbine, through its own actions, starts spinning what's called a generator. And if you've ever, um, if you've ever seen like the early experiments people did with uh, electricity, one of the really popular ones was taking a coil of copper, uh, wrapping it around a piece of metal, and then uh, turning it around inside a magnet, and you'd create electrostatic charges. And that's basically how a generator works at a coal power plant. It turns this uh, piece of metal with a bunch of copper wrapped around it, and it between two huge magnets, and it creates an electrostatic charge, which is uh, then promptly sent out, and that's the power you use to watch TV or you know listen to this. Um, so that, in a lot of ways, is the end of it. But the coal is still going. Now the coal, when you burn it, turns into a bunch of different things. Depending on the content of the coal, uh, you might have like nitrous, uh, nitrous oxide, uh, and well, actually N2O2. Um, you might have, you definitely have carbon dioxide because coal is mostly carbon. You'll have sulfur dioxide and a bunch of other different things um, that are byproducts of this coal being burned. Um, but it comes out in three different forms. There's the slag, which is the heavier stuff. There's a lot of silicas in the coal that'll become slag and fall to the bottom of the furnace. If it's um, a lot less silica-rich stuff, uh, will become ash. This is just, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's ash. Um, it looks like ashes, all that stuff. And the other is, of course, the gases. And the slag goes to the bottom of the boiler. The gases kind of move through this system, and the, the ash goes through another system called environmental. And environmental does uh, two things, or, or it has two major port, uh, points to it. One is the bag house, which is basically a series of uh, fabric filters that catch a lot of the large particulates. And then there's the precipitator, which is actually a, uh, a series of... Huh, the best way to describe it, and this is my area of expertise, so I, I get a little wordy when I come to it. Um, so you ever seen ionic breeze internally? I know this is a rhetorical question now. Uh, but what it does is it electrifies or ionizes uh, part of the thing, and it's got this plate inside of it. And so by ionizing the air on one side, it's uh, putting a particle charge on everything that goes by, and it clings, by uh, putting uh, a negative charge on it, it clings to the positively charged uh, plate. And that's really what happens in a precipitator. Everything, there's these coil wires, or there's these straight things called ribbon electrodes. Uh, those have a really strong charge going through them, thanks to the fact that you're at a coal power plant, so you have all the power you need. And by running that charge through them, it charges all the air up, and all the particles, therefore, get charged as they come past, and they cling to these things called, uh, they're actually just called plates. They're called collecting electrodes in a lot of places, even though they're not charged at all. Um, and then this is hit by a series of hammers. It takes all of the, uh, the built-up particles off, puts them in a hopper, and uh, you can actually then pull the hoppers off and dump these where you need to. So with that, you've pretty much reached the end of a, coal, a piece of coal's life cycle. One thing worth noting in the last few seconds is that coal plants actually release more radiation than most nuclear plants because there's a higher concentration of nuclear particles in coal. Hope everyone had a good time. Bye.